brought you guys to Spring Creek? Um, I don't know what brought us here, but we, a lot of tailors lived here. Okay. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Did you go to school here? Yeah. So your entire life is Spring Creek? Right. And let me ask a question. On December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day, do you remember that? Yeah. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I remember the paper when it came out and everything was splashed all over it. Yeah, it was quite a day. Do you remember much about how Spring Creek reacted to the beginning of the war? Was there a draft notices? Was there the kids from school? Yes. My uncle was one of them that was taken right away. He was a lieutenant in the Army. And um, then there was this, oh, all the tailors were in, ended up yeah. in so all that were old enough then. So you were born here during a time when uh, Robert Jackson's uh, least the home was there, and though he did not own it, he came back and would summer there. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's some articles about him coming here. Uh, did you guys know much about the fact that right here in your Spring Creek, Pennsylvania, was a an official, somebody important? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody did, especially they'd go down to Donaldson Brothers store and they'd gather there and talk about it. All the excitement and everything. Did you kind of know at Donaldson's store when he was going to be coming or when he spent the summer? Here? Usually, yeah. you know, yeah, they were ready for him. <laughs> My dad had an ice cream parlor there, and uh, he was a barber and a jeweler, and he worked on the highway too. So. Yeah. Did your dad ever mention meeting Jackson at all? Was there? Mm, no, he never did. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a couple of stories we tracked down of people calling the store, it must be in the same store, uh, phone call, because that was the only phone, looking for Jackson, who was down, of course, in, in, in the, his uh, cabin, if you will, the house. They couldn't get to him, so they would send runners, literally, down to get him. Yeah, yeah, no phones then. No phones. Yeah. When, when Jackson, just, I'm curious about just the community feeling towards Jackson. There are not many people from Spring Creek who rose to his attention. Do you remember what they might say about him or anything reputation-wise? It was nothing bad. It was always good. They were all always excited when he was coming. Yeah. So, yeah. No That's idea? You didn't, you didn't go fishing with him or anything like that, did no, you? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy did. did. Horseback riding. Did you see him horseback riding one time? Mm-hmm. Well, tell me about that. Well, he just came up town and back down to Hires Road. I <laughs> stayed pretty much down there and while he was here. He's so you'd have been a little bit younger, and there's Jackson on a horseback. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember much about that at all? How old would you have been when that occurred? Oh, golly. I'm 94 now. You hide it very well. So, well, thank you. And uh, so it was back when I was probably, oh, four, five, six, seven, right around in there. And you would have been hanging around the store with your, with your, with your dad? Um, my grandfather and grandmother. Okay, yeah. I lived with them. Okay, gotcha. So. You're living with them and uh, out of the blue comes a guy named Robert Jackson, and you recognized him. Yes. <laughs> well, not many people around here can say that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've, we've interviewed a lot of people today, and nobody could say Maybe. what you've just said. That you saw Robert Jackson, her grandfather. I did. Yeah. 
I have a question. Did did it ever seem odd that he uh, was riding horses around instead of like driving a car? Well, it did, but then that's what they brought with them, so that's what they rode around. It was uh, uh, just there. Where was he living at that time? In Jamestown, probably. And D.C. Yeah, and so he'd have to come by railroad and get off at the station. Mm -hmm. How there would be no cars. Probably. I don't know if he brought. Uh, he, he drove. It, yeah. He drove. Yeah. Because they they drove their horses from Jamestown down to Washington D.C. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And it took days longer. And he was so he loved his horses so much he was hysterical. No. Oh. Because he didn't call or anything. Yeah. He. he yeah. I I often wondered because my mother and I rode horses around here a lot. What. If, if people thought that was peculiar. Did you come with him? No, no, I never, I never uh, met him, but we, uh, my mother loves Spring Creek and we built a cabin oh. here. And we hiked. We well, did you have the cabin up on Jackson Hill? It, up on Turner Hill. Would have loved to have gotten a place up on Jackson Hill, but we looked across, from Turner Hill across to Jackson Hill. Across the yeah, cliff farm. Yeah, yeah. Got it from the Catherine's. I knew there was Jacksons up there, but I didn't know if they were related or what. <clears throat> no, uh, I mean, I know that it was a cousin. When you go up to the top and you can go to the right or go down the hill, that house there that has mm -hmm. those trees that are planted all Jackson. in a row, that was a Jackson. Mm -hmm. The old house. That was fresh. The old house. Yeah. yeah. And I've stayed in that house. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who, what Jackson lived there? I was don't. It, it wasn't even it was a Jackson. Jackson. We we knew them, and, and friends of mine. We'd go there and stay to go hunting. When we were younger. Fred Jacksons. Did Fred own that? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Fred, Fred did. But I have, don't know where he's. I don't know but, who he sold it to because it's no longer there. Yeah. Well, Didn't now, they tear it down? Now Clavitz owns the property. Is there a question I should be asking you about the history of Spring Creek? That I haven't asked you yet? Um, no, I don't know. It's. Were you born here, Millie? Yeah. I was born, born down this road. On down, this road? Down this road, this dirt road. You were born at home? You know yep. where Barb, Barb and Roger Grapes place yeah. is? Yeah. That's where she was born. Really? Yeah. Yep. So you're like Robert Jackson to that extent. You were born at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. There probably was a doctor from Cory who delivered you. No, there was a lady <laughs> on the um, East Branch Road. My dad had to get up in the middle of the night, and in the middle of the winter, with a bicycle to go get her to come for a midwife. I'll be darned. A lot of kids born by midwives in those days. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, they just weren't doctors. You couldn't now get was them. Betty born down here too. No, she was born in a hospital. In a hospital? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping in. Well, it's okay. I didn't have much information, but... Well, no, you just said something that's a piece that will make the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let me try. Now, he you, said no, today, All of us cannot say that we saw Robert Jackson. No one here today. No one here today. I, really? That's we, amazing. Nobody. Congratulations. We're lucky. Oh. We're lucky to have you, Millie. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to see you, Tom. Oh, it's always good yeah. to see you, dear. Yeah.